In the previous movie, we created a settings control and added a custom attribute to it to blend between IK and FK leg joint chains. In this movie, we'll create the controls for our FK leg and add the ability to stretch the thigh and shin via custom attributes. Open the file Character Rigging Part 12 Start or use your own file from the previous lesson. First, let's start by creating FK controls for the legs. This process is mostly the same as what you've done in the past for the torso and head rigs. Create a NURB circle and rename it Left Thigh FK Control. Scale it up, then freeze its transformations. Now just like we did for the torso, we'll parent the curve's shape to the FK Thigh Joints Transform node. You can select an object's shape node even when it's not displayed in the outliner by pressing the down arrow key while the curve is selected. Then control select the left thigh FK joint and use the MEL command parent-r-s to move the circle to the joint. Switch to the side view and go to control vertex mode. Rather than having the circle go around the limb like the torso, We'll adjust the vertices so that the control curve runs along it instead. Now you can use this curve to select your thigh FK joint. Create additional controls for the shin, foot, and ball the same way. When you're done, they should look roughly like this. Let's also rename the FK joints with the suffix control, except for the toe. Then place them into a new layer called Legs FK Layer and color it blue. And of course, we must adjust the rotation orders of these joints. A good rotation order will allow us to rotate the joint forward or back, yet still twist or rotate out. In this case, we'll go with XZY. However, unlike the torso and neck, this FK chain shares a direct relationship with the IK and result leg chains, rather than a hybrid relationship. That means we also need to change their rotation orders to match. Now your basic FK controls are all set up. However, they are missing one thing. Similar to how we added the ability to stretch and squash the torso in Part 5, there are instances when we might want to stretch the legs as well. Due to the autonomy of the FK and IK legs, we'll need a solution in both. Observe that there are really two ways to lengthen a joint. We can either increase the joint scale or increase the distance to the joint it's attached to. In general, we don't want to give direct control of a joint scale to the animator. Why? Observe what happens if we create a polygon cube, place it next to the thigh result joint, then parent them. If we scale the thigh in X so the leg becomes longer, the cube stretches as we would expect. However, if we try rotating the cube, you'll notice it begins shearing wildly. This is because the cube exists within the thigh's non-uniform space. For this reason, we're going to control the length by using the distance to the next joint in the chain. Before we start, let's add the leg geometry into the geo layer 
and then hide it so we can clearly see the joints. Let's also temporarily hide the IK joints since we won't be working with them for now. Because of the way we've oriented the joints, note how a simple increase in the X value of the shin joints translation lengthens and shortens the thigh bone. Thus, we'll create an attribute on the thigh that will control the shin's X translation, thereby giving us control of the length. Name this attribute length and set its minimum to 0 and its default to 1. Now we'll set a driven key to link the distance to the shin joint to this new attribute. Open the Set Driven Key Editor and select the left thigh FK control as the driver and the left shin FK control as the driven. Select both the driver's length attribute and the driven's translate X attribute and set a key. Now set both length and translate x attributes to zero. Set another key. Now we can select the attribute and middle drag the length from zero to one. However, notice how the leg extends a lot further from 0.5 to 0.6 than it does from 0.9 to 1. It would be better if this was uniform, so we can more accurately predict a stretch. Also notice that once the leg gets to a length value of 1, it stops extending. Now we could set another driven key at 2, or 3, or any number beyond but that means there will always be an upper limit on how far this limb can stretch. Instead, let's address these issues in the graph editor. Select left shin FK control, then open the graph editor. In the outliner view of the graph editor, select the translate X attribute and press the F key to frame it. This is the animation curve from 0 to 1, linked to the length of our thigh bone. First, select both start and end keys and set their tangents to linear. This will give the thigh bone more predictable extensions and contractions. Next, we need to get the leg to extend past a value of 1. If you turn on the View Infinity option, notice the animation curve goes flat beyond the end key, indicating the value doesn't change beyond that. Select the end key and use the curves post infinity command to set the out tangent to linear beyond 1. Now the curve continues on forever, indicating the translate x value will increase as the length attribute value increases. Back in the workspace, this means we can now stretch our thigh as far as we want. Using what you've learned, add a length attribute to the shin as well using a driven key to link it to the foot joint. The length attributes are working just like we want them, but you'll notice if we turn the visibility of the geo layer back on, the geometry isn't scaling along with our joints. To get this to work, we could connect the scale of the geometry to the length of the result joints they're parented under. Unlike the joints, it's okay to modify the scale of the geometry because we should never be parenting anything below them. However, let's try scaling the geometry just to see what would happen. Notice as we stretch the thigh longer, it pulls away from the knee. This is because the thigh joint isn't actually straight. Rather than scale the geometry along Y, we need to scale it parallel to the joint. Let's create an empty group node and point snap it to the thigh joint. Then rotate it slightly in local mode so it matches up with the thigh.
Name it left thigh geo orient group and parent it under the left thigh result joint. Then reparent the left thigh geo node under it. Try scaling the group node in Y. This time the geometry lines up a lot better with the actual leg joint. Now we can use the translate X value of the shin joint, representing the thigh length, to drive this scale. However, we can't just connect them directly. After all, look at the default shin position. If we connect this directly to the scale, it's going to stretch the leg exponentially. To fix this proportion problem, we'll need to normalize the value by dividing by its at rest value, much like we did for the spine and neck. Load the thigh and shin result joints, as well as the left thigh geo orient group, into the node editor and create a multiply divide node. Rename it left thigh normalize div. Connect the left shin result joints translate x value to the input 1x value of the left thigh normalize div. Set input 2x to the at rest value and the operation to divide. And feed the output x value into the left thigh geo orient group nodes scale y attribute. Now try lengthening the joint and you'll see the geometry scales properly. Repeat the entire operation for the shin joint. At this point you should have a stretchy FK leg ready to go. We won't bother with foot stretching since the use cases are few and far between. In the next movie, we'll look at setting up a stretchy IK leg to match.